We often shoot portraits from eye level or from a standing point of view, but let's take our angle to an extreme. Shoot with your camera on the floor or from high up overhead on a ladder or simply from an angle that is unexpected. The unusual angle can help add an element of interest and surprise to your images. Your challenge is this, to shoot from an extreme angle. Shoot from a bridge down onto your subject below or shoot with your subject sitting high above you in a tree. And if you are even close to eye level, you're doing it wrong, shoot again. And by shooting at a low angle, perhaps you can put a person against a completely blue sky or make an image that is clean and graphic, or you can even incorporate a structural element of a building nearby that would have otherwise been unnoticed if you were shooting at eye level. Shoot from overhead with your subject reclining back looking up at you. And if you aren't laying on the floor, seeking out higher ground, push yourself further. Join me as I shoot from some extreme angles. So today I am standing on a ladder shooting down on my beautiful model and it's going to make a really interesting photograph. We've selected this dress because it can kind of sprawl out around her and it makes for a really dynamic look that you wouldn't see if she were standing up. Sure, you might have the movement and the texture of the dress, but this downward angle is making use of how full and how beautiful it is. I've also decided to try a little bit of creative lighting because I thought that that dress looks kind of like a kaleidoscope. So what I have is I have a Profoto D1 Air with a white beauty dish and a grid. And basically what that light does is it just illuminates the center of her. But if I do that, the sides of the dress fall to shadow. They fall to dark gray, almost black. I want to add a little bit of color. So I have two other lights, one with a magenta gel and one with a teal gel. The gel is going to show up most in the shadow areas of the photograph. So that's why I have this light centered and then a gel on either side. Now that I'm shooting at a high angle, I definitely want to be aware of safety. So I'm not standing on the top rung of the ladder. I also have a sandbag on this ladder. And for the model safety, I'm going to be using a Spider Holster Pro hand strap. So if I need to shoot straight out over the model, it gives me a little bit more stability. I'm gonna try on this ladder, try a couple different angles, and then I'm gonna get on a bigger ladder so I can have a more dramatic angle, get even more of a dramatic shot. Definitely make sure that if you're shooting from an unusual angle, particularly like on top of a ladder, that you try zoom lenses. And right now I have a Canon 5D Mark III and the Canon 16 to 35 lens. Because I can zoom, it's going to make it easier for me. A fixed lens is going to be very difficult to change my composition. So a zoom lens is definitely going to be great. And I'm gonna try this 16 to 35 so I can really get right up over top of my model if I want using that wider angle lens. I love the colors in these shots, and I know that if I want to enhance them more, if I want to bring them out more, I'm going to be able to play with vibrance in Lightroom CC. Or what I can do is I can play with the hue, the saturation, the luminance of each of those colors in order to make it really pop. What I'll likely do is pull out the saturation in her skin so that it's really pale and creamy and smooth. And then what I'm going to do is pump up all of the other colors in the shot so it really has that pop add a little bit of contrast, add a little bit of clarity, and it's going to give me those finishing touches on this photograph. Okay, so now let's get shooting at an unusual angle. Okay, so can you bring both of your arms across to your right? Beautiful. Beautiful. Perfect. Let me get a little lower for this one, just a little bit higher for you. Perfect. I'm gonna have you lean out to your right this time. Mm-hmm. And now look your chin way, way up. And I'm gonna do that again on this ladder a bit. Good. As a working photographer, I am always on the go. And sometimes I find it hard to find time to be able to edit down, to narrow down my photographs and tweak them. What I really like is to be able to do this when it's convenient for me or when I have downtime. Perhaps when I'm at the doctor's office or on the subway, on a plane, or even when I'm watching TV. There are plenty of times where it's not convenient to be sitting in front of my computer and I really wish I had the ability to edit through these photographs on the go. And that is exactly what Adobe Lightroom Mobile is for. Lightroom Mobile is going to allow me to sync selected photographs from my catalog and to be able to narrow them down, rate them, and do edits wherever I have my iPad. So let's take a look at how we do this. And right now I'm working in Adobe Lightroom CC, which is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography Plan, which is going to allow me to have the most up-to-date versions of both Lightroom and Photoshop at all times. 
So let's take a look at some of the images that I've worked with today, and I've already done some narrowing down of these photographs. And I have them narrowed down to two or more stars, and I have a selection of about 34 photographs. But I know I'm going to want to narrow this down to even fewer photographs, and I want to make some tweaks to crop and, and perhaps the contrast and color, and I want to be able to do this on the go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync these files up with Adobe Lightroom Mobile. And here's how I'm going to do that. First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these photographs. And you could do this by hitting Command A or whatever your Select All option is. And then I'm going to click on the plus sign next to Collections. I'm going to create a collection that is synced with Adobe Lightroom Mobile. And I'm going to call this Collection Extreme Angle because that's our challenge today. Now when you create a collection, there are two very important things you have to have checked. The first is to include selected images. As you can see, I just selected 34 photographs from the greater selection of what I photographed. So right now when I click include selected images, it's going to automatically sync those with Adobe Lightroom Mobile when I create this collection. But it won't do that if I don't have sync with Lightroom Mobile selected. So you need to have both of these options checked in order for this to work. So I'm going to hit create. And it's created a brand new collection for me called Extreme Angle. And now what it's doing is it is syncing these 34 files with my Adobe Lightroom Mobile. What I'm going to be able to do is narrow down these photographs, make some edits, and when I'm done, it's going to sync back to this catalog. And I'm going to be able to do that all through my iPad. Right now those files are syncing, so let's go take a look at my iPad to see what it looks like in the Adobe Lightroom mobile interface and see how I can edit, narrow down, and make changes to these photographs. All right, so right now I'm on my iPad and I'm going to find Adobe Lightroom mobile and open that up. And everything I'm going to do is with a touch of the finger. It's a swipe of the finger. And as you can see, when I open Lightroom Mobile, you can see that collection of 34 images that I created of the extreme angle, and all of those have been synced. So I'm gonna click on that. And it has a beautiful grid of all my photographs. When I see one I like, I can click on it. I can zoom in to check focus. I can also see things in a film strip mode, so I can scroll through those photographs again. If I click on the lower left-hand corner, I have the ability to flag and rate these images. So for example, if I really like this photograph, I could give it a five star. Or I can swipe up to pick this photograph or swipe down to unflag it or reject this photograph. Again, clicking on the right hand side. Now I can go over to adjustments. And maybe for this photograph, I want to increase the contrast a bit. Or I want to pump up the clarity and add even more vibrance. All of these things are things I'm able to do right here in Lightroom Mobile. Furthermore, when I select another photograph and go to adjustments, I can also apply all of the previous adjustments that I have just added. And I can do everything from previous photos and notice how those changes are applied. What's great is all of these changes I'm making, how I'm editing through my photographs, how I'm narrowing down, this is all going to sync back with my Lightroom catalog. So all of these changes are going to be updated and I can view them back on my desktop. All of this editing is being done through Adobe Lightroom Mobile, making it simple and convenient for me to edit through my photographs, narrow them down, and figure out which ones I want to present to my clients.